Hi. So the other day, I was sitting by my window in the morning, sipping my coffee, and it's in the middle of summer and sweltering hot, and the only cool time is early in the mornings. So there I was sipping my coffee and uh, listening to the birds tweeting, chirping. We have lots of trees around here. In the middle of all the tweeting and chirping, I heard this fluty sound. So I rushed outside to see which bird it was and to my delight I saw a flash of yellow flying away from a tree and I knew I had spotted a golden oriole. It is a common bird in India but very hard to spot because it hides in the topmost branches of thick leafy trees. Not only is its colour a good camouflage from down below, but also a great one against its main predators, which are the big, uh, big birds like uh, hawks, eagles, um, raptors, and also crows. Anyway, so I decided I had to paint it. So I have a 11 by 12 inch canvas board on which I put a base coat of various green colors on which I sketched out my bird. I got several pictures of it from royalty free websites and I created my composition referring to them. I begin by using yellow ochre mixed with a little burnt sienna as the base layer of the yellow parts of the bird adding a little burnt sienna in the shadow parts. Of course, I have listed all the colors I've used in this painting in the description below. So do check it out. You know, ever since I painted my crow family, if you haven't watched that, I've given the link below in the description and it will pop up at the end of this video. So ever since that painting, I've been itching to paint another bird and I just couldn't decide which one I wanted to. Well, my sighting of my golden oriole decided it for me. I just love its incredibly striking colors. You know, those bright sunny yellows and the black wings and tail. This is the male bird that I'm painting. So here I've added some orange to the burnt sienna without washing my brush. So I also have the yellow color in it. Now I begin adding brighter yellows, beginning with cadmium yellow deep, adding strokes of cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light, even lemon yellow, sometimes using a little titanium white with them. So getting back to the golden oriole as a species, as with many other birds, the male is bigger in size and has brighter plumage, whereas the female is more dull looking, being slightly greener in color. The average size of a golden oriole is about 20 to 24 centimeters. They have beautiful reddish golden eyes and they have pretty long beaks which are pink in color which they use to pick insects out of the crevices in the bark of trees and pluck the small fruit that you find high up in the trees where they like to be because of the great camouflage it gives them. It has strong, wide clawed feet which help in holding on to the more tricky branches up in the trees when it gathers its food. I add burnt sienna in all the shadow parts mixed with a little bit of orange. It's interesting to know that the golden oriole is a summer migrant meaning it migrates to cooler climates in the summer months and flies back to the warmer tropics for the winter months. This bird is predominantly found in Asia, of course, Europe and also parts of Africa. And despite it being a solitary bird usually, but they can be seen migrating in large flocks, usually under the cover of night. Another interesting thing I found out about this bird is that although it has a shy disposition, but golden orioles can get incredibly aggressive if any bird or animal approaches its nest, swooping and diving and making harsh screeching sounds to chase away the intruder.
as an animal lover, one great piece of news that I discovered about this beautiful bird is that it's listed as being an animal of least concern of imminent extinction. Despite the destruction of its habitat, which is usually thick forests, it makes do in the remaining jungles, in orchards, in parks, and in the trees in urban areas. So it's so important to plant trees, isn't it? The golden oriole itself regenerates trees and forests by spreading the seeds of the fruits it eats. Hence, it's great for our ecosystem. So as it is usual in acrylic painting, you keep going back and forth. You add the shadow colors and then you top it with brighter colors and it goes on and on like that. I usually do this until I'm satisfied. It's all about layering and that's the fun part of it. Alright, now for the black wings. I've, I've mixed a chromatic black using dark green, Prussian blue, crimson lake and some orange. For the highlights on the wings, I've mixed some Prussian blue and yellow ochre. And getting back my darks, again using the layering process to get depth and dimension. Using my yellows now for the yellow marks on the wings and tail.
For the leg, I am using yellow ochre mixed with white, adding some Prussian blue for the shadows. And now for the beak, the golden oriole has a beautiful pink beak for which I've mixed some orange, red, magenta, a little burnt sienna plus a little white. I still have the yellows in my brush. I give dimension to the beak using lighter shades by adding white and yellow and darker shades using burnt sienna and some Prussian blue. For the eye, I am using my chromatic black for the darker areas plus some burnt sienna, red, yellow and a little white for the lighter areas. I also add some yellow ochre for the little rim around the eye. And now for that beautiful black stripe that the Indian Golden Oriole especially has around its eyes. I'm using my chromatic black of course. I even add uh, straight black from the tube. I've got uh, Mars black for the darker shadings. I'm adding Mars Black to give more depth to the wings and tail.
back to the yellows to add more dimension. I am using a small liner brush for this. Adding more color, depth and dimension to the eye. Working a little more on the foot, I am using yellow ochre mixed with a little white and a little burnt sienna. In the shadow parts, I am adding a little Prussian blue and a darker color of black. Back to adding more dimension to the wings and the tail using Prussian blue mixed with a little yellow ochre and then adding more dimension to the black stripe around the eye using dark colors like chromatic black plus a little bit of crimson, burnt sienna, just adding more depth and dimension.
adding burnt sienna to the yellow ochre. Yellow ochre plus some white without washing my brush for the highlight. For the base coat of the branches, I'm using yellow ochre plus Prussian blue with a little white added to it. Adding more of the blue in the shadowy parts of the branches. I'm using my chromatic black for the dark branches. I'm using the same chromatic black, adding a little blue to it for the shadowy leaves. Adding more dimension to the branches with my yellow ochre, white, a little burnt sienna and a little Prussian blue. Using more burnt sienna here and for the darker crevices and cracks in the branches I'm using my chromatic black. I added more white 
into the yellow ochre mixture for the highlights of the branches. For the bluish green leaves, I have mixed a color of light blue, white, viridian green, a little bit of mid green and a touch of yellow. I am adding dashes of straight blue here. It is a mixture of cobalt blue a little cyan blue and adding little touches of white. I am just making an abstract kind of effect in the foliage. I love playing with my background and I am having great fun doing this. And now I am using an acrylic marker pen to add burnt sienna dabs and dashes here and there, depicting smaller twigs which you find up in the branches. So that's it for today. I hope you like my golden oriole and of course please do subscribe, hit the like button, do leave a comment below. I would love to know what you think about my golden oriole. Thank you for watching and bye for now. See you next time.